as you know, we are committed to constructing the Western Sydney Airport at uh, Badgerys Creek. This is a huge project, uh, and it is one that will bring jobs and industry to Western Sydney. Uh, but it needs to have very good transport links. We've already committed $2.9 billion, together with a $700 million from the state government, to ensure that there is a, there is a road network there but it is plain that there will need to be more rail in Western Sydney and not just to the new airport. Uh, rail adds value, it reduces the congestion you were speaking about just a moment ago. Um, the, the traffic forecasts for the airport tell us that there wouldn't be enough demand at the airport to justify a rail link until the 2040s. Well, firstly, we are building station boxes, you know, uh, cavities under the where the terminals will be to enable there to be two rail lines. So we're putting in, we're making the airport, we'll make it rail ready for, to, for rail to be installed. But we believe we should be more ambitious. And what we are doing is working with the state government to see how we can bring the rail to the airport and more rail to Western Sydney much sooner, ideally when the airport opens. We've got to be innovative in the way we approach this. We've got to recognise that rail adds an enormous amount of value to, to property. It enables greater amenity, greater development, greater density, more housing, more affordable housing, and all of some of that value should be captured to fund the new rail. We've got to take a much more uh, a, a modern and innovative approach to funding urban infrastructure. You know, budgets are strained, both state and federal, we know that. So we've got to look at the, the investing in our cities as as much an economic exercise uh, as as anything else. So it is a it is. Uh, I'm I'm very confident that we will find a way to bring the rail to the to the airport and to Western Sydney to the because it's not obviously there's a this is part of a whole integrated development of Western Sydney. Right. Well, in one moment, I'm going to talk to you about the uh, how that was funded, and I guess you'll be looking at value capture, and we That's might great. have a talk about value capture in a moment. Yeah, sure. But there is a, a little note here from one of our listeners who lives in the Blue Mountains, and she says, well, thank you very much indeed for uh, being an infrastructure Prime Minister. She said thanks to you and Lucy for tackling in infrastructure, says Helen McKenzie in the Blue Mountains. Let's have a world-class train system like those in Europe. Now, I'd like to ask you, is there anywhere uh, a city of commensurate size that you think does it well for rail, somewhere we could emulate? Well, there are, there are many cities that do it very well, um, and obviously the, the cities that you think about are big cities like London and indeed um, or New York, but uh, obviously in, in Asia you've seen extraordinary growth in urban rail. I mean, Shanghai opened to start it, its uh, urban rail network in 1995, and it is now either the biggest or the second biggest in the world. I mean, the, the reality is, Wendy, that uh, we are all, cities are becoming denser. We're living we're living closer together. Density is not the problem. Density is the solution. But it has to be coupled with amenity. If you, if you, the, the great mistake that Bob Carr made, for example, in his long term as Premier here, is he allowed Sydney to develop but didn't invest in the infrastructure. If you invest in the good transport infrastructure, then uh, density gives does give greater amenity because there are more things to do. You're closer to work. You're closer to university. We've got to work around the idea of a 30-minute city where people can get to work, to university, to school, to whatever they want to do, to all of the things they want to do within 30 minutes. 30 these, minutes, okay. these, these, that, that should be a goal. Now, that's not going to... I mean, if somebody, you know, chooses to work in, um, you know, in the eastern suburbs well, of Sydney they... but wants to live in the Blue Mountains, well, that's oh, going to take a... That's the northern gonna, beaches, where they have to sort of well, queue well, to get over the well, over the well, bridge. Well, that, that, that's right. But you see, what we uh, that's and of course people will make all sorts of choices. But you see, one of the problems with uh, the the way the city has grown, and this applies to the central coast, it applies to Western Sydney, is there are not enough centres of employment uh, there. The, the, you know, building these big, essentially allowing uh, large dormitory suburbs to develop has created these congestion and transport problems. So the solution is more jobs, more business, more activity, 
Newton. That's why Western Sydney University uh, is so important, for example, where I'm giving a speech today. Oh, has... well, my son yeah, is, attends that uh, well, university. Well, there you go. But you see, that's an important point. There is a, you know, there's a technology incubator out at Warrington that I, that I opened, that Western Sydney University has been, um, has, has sponsored. All of these things are important, but the, the transport infrastructure is critical because it, 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 it brings, it knits the whole city together and enables people to move around